Hello, so in this video I'm going to go over the, um, all the different types of reactions that you come across in higher chemistry because you can quite often get questions asking you to identify the type of a reaction. So, if we look first of all at combustion, so mostly you'll be asked about, asked about complete combustion, however you should also know about incomplete combustion from National 5 chemistry. So the definition of a combustion reaction is, or a complete combustion reaction, is where a substance burns completely in oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. So I've drawn an example of that where I've got the combustion of ethane gas. And the things that you want to look out for to identify a complete combustion reaction is that you've got oxygen as a reactant, because that's what the substance is burning in, and that you have carbon dioxide and water as a product. If you have carbon monoxide, so that's just CO, then that means it's incomplete combustion. So there's been a limited supply of oxygen and the fuel's not burned completely. So then the next type of reaction that you have come across at some point is neutralization. So this one you've learned about in National 5 as well. That's where an acid and an alkali or a base react to produce a salt and water. So a base is just a solid that can dissolve in water to produce an alkaline solution or a solid that could be used to neutralize an acid. Um, acids are easy to spot by name because they've all got acid at their end of their name. Um, alkalis and bases are a bit more mysterious but you're really for something to be an acid a, a base is usually a metal oxide hydroxide or carbonate. So to identify a neutralization reaction, you're looking for an acid and an alkali as your reactants and a salt and water as your products. Now you might struggle to identify if something's a salt, it's not always the easiest thing, um, but the salt in this particular reaction would be the sodium chloride. Um, usually there's a, um, some form of like sodium, magnesium, calcium, iron, if it's a salt. Um, but the water and then the al acid and the alkali as the reactants can give it away enough as it is and then whatever the other product is would be the salt. So then we've got condensation. So the definition of condensation reaction is where you have two small mo molecules joining with the loss of another small molecule. So usually that small molecule that's produced is water which is why it's called a condensation reaction. So you've got the water here. However it's not always water so if you have two molecules joining with the loss of a small molecule, it's not water, it can still be classed as a condensation reaction. Um, so you will see this reaction for making esters and also for making proteins or amides, peptides, whatever you want to call them. So this one here, this example here shows making an ester. So you'd be looking for a carboxylic acid and an alcohol as a reactant and then you end up producing your ester and then also water. However, like I said, it could just be two other molecules joining with the loss of a small molecule. Um, so it would really depend on the reaction you're given. Then this is the example where you're producing a peptide or a amide or a protein, whatever you want to call it. So in this case, you've got the carboxylic acid again as a reactant, but this time it's reacting with an amine. So an amine is a molecule that has this NH2 group here, or it can sometimes be NH, if that's an amine functional group, and they join together to give you the amide link, which can also be called a peptide link, plus water. Okay, so again, you're looking for the reactants to be a carboxylic acid and an amine, and then you're producing an amide link, a base molecule and water as well. So the opposite of condensation is hydrolysis. So this is where you're breaking down a large molecule by reacting with water. So the water splits the molecule up. Lysis, eh, at the end of the name hydrolysis, means splitting, and hydro means water. So hydrolysis, if you were to translate it, means splitting with water. So you'd be looking for water as a reactant, and you tend to split up or hydrolyze ester links and amide links. Uh, so they're the two functional groups that you've seen that could actually undergo a hydrolysis reaction. And then you end up producing your carboxylic acid and alcohol again in the case of it being an ester. If you're hydrolyzing an amide 
which is what her amide, which is what's in this example, you'll end up producing a carboxylic acid and an amine again. Okay, so ester links and peptide amide links are the functional groups that will be broken down via hydrolysis. Um, when you are making a soap, it's specifically alkaline hydrolysis that gets used. Um, and that's because you end up wanting to make the salt of the fatty acid. So essentially what happens is you perform hydrolysis and then you neutralize the acid to make the salt. So that whole two step process together gets called alkaline hydrolysis. So then we're on to oxidation. So you did this a little bit in National 5 as well, where you learned about oil rig. So you learned about oxidation and reduction in National 5 in relation to gaining or losing electrons. So oxidation is loss of electrons, hence the oil, O-I-L, oxidation is loss. So you're looking for electrons to be on the product side of the reaction because they're getting lost. But other things you can look for if the electrons aren't shown in the reaction um, is the a negative substance becoming um, neutral, a neutral substance becoming positive. Okay, so any type of process that involves loss of electrons. Then we've got oxidation in a higher sense. So that you've learned about this last year. So this can be to do with the change in the oxygen to hydrogen ratio. So if a substance has gained oxygen or lost hydrogen, that can be an oxidation reaction as well. So things you can look out for to identify these are like the functional group changes. So if you've had a hydroxyl group change into a carbonyl, that's a sign that's lost hydrogen, it's lost H2. If you have the carbonyl going to a carboxyl group, again, that's gained oxygen, so that would be a sign of oxidation. Uh, generally, you're just really looking to see if it's lost any hydrogen or gained any oxygen, okay? Sometimes looking at how the functional groups are changing can help you identify it. So then reduction is the opposite. So that's gain of electrons. The RIG stands for reduction is gain. So in this case, you're looking for either a positive particle becoming neutral by gaining electrons or a neutral substance becoming a negative ion because it's gained electrons. And usually if the electrons are shown, if it's the half equation you're seeing, then the electrons will be there as a reactant. Sometimes in the higher exam though, or in higher assessment, questions, you'll be shown the overall redox reaction and so you don't actually get to see any electrons so you're really looking for whether the thing's gone from positive to neutral or neutral to negative or vice versa. So as well as looking for the change in electrons, you can also look for the oxygen hydrogen ratio. So oxidation is gain of oxygen, loss of hydrogen, which means reduction is the opposite. So it's loss of oxygen or gain of hydrogen. So in this particular reaction I've got here, it's showing hydrogen peroxide losing oxygen to form water. Um, so you can see that the H2O2 is ended up as H2O, which means it's lost oxygen. And also this equation is not balanced. There should be a half in front of that oxygen. Um, so you're looking for the carbonyl becoming a hydroxyl. So basically these are all the things to look for the opposite of oxidation. I'm just going to add the half in there. Um, so yes, the opposite of oxidation. So you can have a carbonyl becoming a hydroxyl, a carboxyl becoming a carbonyl, or then you're just generally looking to see if the substance has gained or lost oxygen in the process of the reaction. So then the next one, addition. So an addition reaction is where you are adding a diatomic molecule or water to an unsaturated compound. So remember, unsaturated means it's got double to carbon, double carbon to carbon bonds. So like this alkene I've got here. So this in this particular reaction, we're adding bromine and you're only forming one product. So if you've got an addition reaction, you'll be adding two things and making one thing. Usually one of the reactants will have a double carbon to carbon bond, at least one double carbon to carbon bond in it. So you can look out for that as well. And um, the double bond breaks open and the bromines add to either side. This particular addition reaction could be called bromination because you're adding the bromine. This particular addition reaction here, we're adding hydrogen 
So this can be called hydrogenation, and this is what a uh, reaction that actually takes place when you are changing an oil into a fat. So increasing the melting point for oils, you hydrogenate them because it breaks the double bonds, makes them less unsaturated so they become more saturated and therefore their chains are straighter which means they can pack more neatly and therefore have long, stronger London dispersion forces. Um, so you can sometimes be asked about hydrogenation in relation to the fats and oils subtopic in unit two but generally you're looking for the same thing a reactant that's got a double carbon to carbon bond and then you're only actually making one substance. If you're adding water it can be called hydration um, so what happens is the water splits up into hydrogen ion and a hydroxide ion and the hydrogen will go on one side of the double bond, the hydroxide ion goes on the other side and you end up forming an alcohol. Um, but again, you're still, you've got a reactant that's got a double carbon to carbon bond and you're only making one particular product. Okay, uh, lastly, the opposite of this hydration is dehydration. So if you are removing water, That's a dehydration reaction. Okay, so if this reaction was reversed, so it was going that way, that's you dehydrating the alcohol to make an alkene. Okay, so it's not the same as condensation because where you're producing water because you're joining molecules, you're producing water because you've removed it from a molecule. Okay, so if you imagine if you're not drinking enough water, you're losing water, you're dehydrating. It's the same thing, it's the loss of water from a substance, but not through it joining with something else, it's just eliminated from that one particular thing. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful. And you now have a better idea of what to look out for when you're identifying different types of reactions.